Well, grace and peace, everyone. I'm Pastor Riley. I want to welcome you back to our Believing God's Word broadcast. This is where God and His Word are encouraging meant to use to make God and His Word the final authority. Amen. And um, God's Word works, and it is working mightily in me and through me and through you. His Word, the incorruptible, indestructible, infallible, ever-living seed Word of God. And um, so we just like to keep saying, I say that all the time. I say God's word works. You never hear me say, well, I've been saying the word and it's not working. No, it's working. It's working. God's word works. And remember, we're in a word covenant. We've been talking about covenant, which, which is our legal contract, you know, uh, with, with God through Jesus, you know. And uh, as a matter of fact, in the book of um, Hebrews 7, I'm already over here. It says, by so much was Jesus made the surety of a better testament. Now, that word testament is also the word covenant. Okay? And that's what I'm saying. And this year, we we just want to get people covenant-minded. We talked about it last week. David was able to to demonstrate God's um, power, um, demonstrate um, um, God's... um, um, covenant love called loving kindness. See, he was able to demonstrate God's love and kindness in his in his in his life and over over um, the Philistine the Philistines because he was covenant minded. And the Bible tells us that we ought to be covenant minded in Chronicles sixteen five. I mean fifteen. So we ought to be covenant minded. Why? Because this covenant. Now we're going to bring this covenant to the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. He is the he is the surety, the guarantor of a better testament, which is covenant. But because of the shedding of his own blood. Um, and don't be afraid to read uh, Hebrews, the, the whole book of Hebrews. I mean, some beautiful things in here because it starts like like, for instance, Hebrews 8, 6. It says how now, but now have he obtained more excellent ministry. Who have Jesus? His ministry is excellent. By how much, how much also he is the mediator. He he resolved the conflict between man and God. And then, you know, and I can talk for just from that that he's it's a covenant of peace that the Bible. We're gonna talk about all the different things in the covenant. And um a mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. We said we was going to talk about the promises of God. And you are not exempt from any promise God has made. There's Old Testament promises that God has made, and there's New Testament promises that God has made. Now, I want to show you something because in um, this is a scripture that I know we know. But let's look at it from covenant perspective, our, our agreement. You know, it's a new covenant. The Bible called it a new people. So I said, well, it's the same old covenant. No, the Bible specifically says he took away the first. That's all in Hebrews 1, that he may establish the second. He said if the first was without fault, then it would be no need to sought for a second. So it wasn't fault in God in the first covenant. It was just that it was fault in the people. Because, you know, when you get to the ninth chapter, you'll see there was, there was, um, this covenant was blood of animals, bulls and goats and heifers and turtle doves and all of those things. And God was using a lesser blood because that, and he says that blood in Hebrews 9, 9 could not make anybody perfect concerning the conscience. (laughs) It only can appease, you know, get you know, help us to say, well, I did give, I did offer the sacrifice that um, God needed at the, you know, at the time to clear me of what that action I did. But that, but in the 14th verse, it said it was only to the purifying of the flesh. See? But Jesus' blood came in and changed our spirits. <laughs> and we're going to see that and gave us eternal forgiveness, uh, eternal and, and redeemed us. Purchased us back, so I'm I'm looking forward. I'll do about a couple of sessions on this because I really 
want you to see how powerful the blood of Christ is and what makes this the new covenant and a better covenant founded upon better promises. Amen. Now let's go to um, um, 2 Corinthians 1 20. It said for all, well, let's start at the at the uh, 19 verse. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among us, among you by us, Paul is addressing the Corinth, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay. And see, and this is what I love about it because what the everything, every promise in the New Testament is not, well, God, it's good for you, but it's not good for you. Well, God's not doing this now. In your situation, he's reneging. Remember we said even in the Old Testament that God said he will not break his covenant. Even though it was the first covenant, a lesser covenant, as I can say, because man was spiritually dead. The penalty wasn't paid yet. Um, God said, no alter the words that go forth out of my mouth. Now, if God altered his words in the New Testament, you're smart. We're intelligent people. Well, how could it be a better covenant? <laughs> it couldn't be a better covenant. He didn't, he didn't renege in the Old Testament. So he's not, he definitely will not um, change his words in the New Testament. Because this new covenant was sealed with the blood of Jesus. So he says it was not yea and amen. It was not yea and nay. But in him, but in him was, yeah, for all, say all, the promises of God in him, talking about Christ Jesus, are yea, yes, and in him, so be it, let it be full strength in my life, amen. So the way we receive promises, when you read and see what these promises are, all you need to say, yes, and amen, <laughs> hallelujah, that's the response, not yeah, I'm going to go pray for a promise. I'm going to go. I'm praying about this promise. No, you don't need to pray about it. You need to agree with it. <laughs> you need to agree with that promise and say, listen, it's yes and amen. And I have it now. Hallelujah. And God. And, you know, another thing we were talking earlier, Numbers 33, 19, God said, God is not like man. That's why it's important to understand covenant, because people will make agreements with you and covenants with you or, and, and then they'll break them. But the Bible said God is not like man. In Numbers, um, is it 33, 19? I think so. Up in the, but anyway, it's on the screen. Um, um, he's not like man. If he said it, you know, he'll, he'll do it. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. God is not. The Bible said God cannot lie in Hebrews 6. He said, by two immutable things, unchangeable. Number one, God cannot lie. Number two, he's already sent truth before us, which is Jesus, the forerunner who sat at the right hand of God as our high priest. Somebody say amen. Now, I hope I can get into that because that's a powerful statement I just said. So every promise of God is yes and amen. Now, we also, um, let's look at, um, a promise. Well, what's a promise here? Um, the Bible said Jesus is the surety of the new covenant. Then we see also that Jesus himself um, has promised us eternal life. Let's go. Well, the promise of the Spirit. Let's go to Galatians. Here's a promise. Here's a promise. A very good promise. Um, Galatians the uh, third chapter. Well, I like searching through my scriptures. Oh, but I got to find Galatians. Hey, where are you? Okay. Galatians 3. Now watch this. It says, <clears throat> it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. The blessing. Blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles 
through Jesus Christ that he might that we might receive the promise the promise of the spirit through faith so the promise of the spirit well let's talk about what's the promise of the spirit here because sometimes we look at this stuff and we say okay what's the promise of the spirit well first of all the promise that we'll be made alive to God. We'll be back in union with him. That's the first thing that happens to, to a believer. It also goes with Titus. Let's go to Titus real quick. Show you something. Very, very good scripture. Titus 1. Titus 1, 1. Okay. It says, Paul, the servant of God, the apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. So the word is the truth of God. Godliness means that it, re, it, it causes us to act like God. His truth, his word. When we're walking in the word, we're walking in God. We're walking like him. Then he says, in hope of eternal life. In hope, expectation of eternal life which God that cannot lie, we said earlier, he cannot lie, promised before the world began, hath in due times manifested his word through the preaching which is committed unto you, um, according to the commandment of God, our Savior, to Titus, my own son. So what he's just simply saying is that the promise of the Spirit is eternal life. So when you get born again, that's why any man, Jesus said, he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. So in this new covenant, anyone, everyone that received Jesus Christ as Lord, believed that God has raised him from the dead, according to the scripture, Romans 10, 9, they're saved. Eternal life, it, the promise of eternal life happens the moment they do that. The life of God is inside of them. Here's another promise. Let's look at Ro uh, Romans four. So we just look. We're just going down Promise Boulevard, <laughs> Promise Highway. You understand? Promise Lane. <laughs> and we want you to see this because these are promises. Because a lot of people say all the promises in Christ is yes. What are they? Uh, what you talking about? <laughs> you know they don't know what they are. And I'm just showing you it's the promise of the Spirit. And that also includes the promise of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to prove that in Acts 2. I know I don't have a lot of time, but I'm, we're going to, for the next couple of sessions, we're going to just go down the line of what these promises are. And I'm going to show them to you. And you need to start, yes, and amen, it belongs to me. I have this promise. I have eternal life. I have the God kind of life inside of me. The Zoe. Hallelujah. So, let me get back over here. We're going to, uh, where are we going? Romans 4. Let's go to Romans 4. 17. And see, this is good because this goes with our session. See, I'm not giving you any opinion. I'm just going to let Scripture speak for itself. This is what it says in Romans 4.17. Uh, did I say 4.17? No, 4.13. Let's go to 4.13, because that's a promise. Watch it. For, uh, it says, for if they which are, um, what do we say, 13, right? For the promise, see that? For the promise, you got to say promise. That, that we, he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham. Not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. But through the righteousness which is of faith. For if they which are be of the law be heirs, faith is made void. But the promise was, um, and the promise is made of none effect, because the law worked wrath. For there, where no law is, there is no transgression. See, so therefore it is of faith, our faith in Christ Jesus that it might be by grace. So to, to have that kind, the kind of thought that we, he promised us we'll be heir of the world. So he cannot lie. You and I, whether we have, have consented or amen to that, we are legally in Christ, we are heir of the world. 
And that was given to us by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed. Glory to God. Isn't that good? Now, look at the ninth chapter of Hebrews. The 15th verse. See, I'm doing all the work now. <laughs> you know, it says, For this cause he is the mediator of the new covenant testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that was under the first covenant. They which are called might receive the promise of what? Eternal inheritance. That's another one. I eternally have an inheritance. And you know, people say, well, you know, I, um, I, I disqualify. You can't. You just don't receive it. You can not accept it. But this is an eternal inheritance. And that's why I like what First Peter says. First Peter 1, and I think I'm going to have to stop. First Peter. First Peter 1 says, blessed, it says, um, where we at, where we at? Oh, yeah. It says, blessed be the Father, be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, have begotten us again unto a lively hope. So I just, remember, we was once without hope. We were strangers of the covenant, strangers of the commonwealth of Israel. We're no longer, that's all entailed into our inheritance, see? And, uh, and, and the covenants of promise, like heal, health, and, and prosperity. That's just so important for us to understand. This is all part of the new covenant. The agreement that God ratified with the very blood of Jesus. It says, unto us a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Everything is now, the covenant is the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of Abraham through Christ Jesus, everything goes through him. Everything goes through him. And this is this is yours forever. Look, listen what what um what the next verse says. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved, reserved in heaven for you. And you can draw from that every day. Your inheritance. As a matter of fact, Ephesians 1.17 talks about our eyes being enlightened. God give us the spirit of wisdom, revelation in the knowledge of him. Our eyes being enlightened uh, with understanding that we'll know what is the hope or the expectation of our calling, his invitation into his greatness, and what is the riches, the wealth of the glory, his manifested presence, manifested power, manifested goodness, of his inheritance in the saints, his inheritance in us. So it's just like the blessing. The blessing is in you. I'm not going to be blessed. I am blessed. I carry the blessing. Ephesians 1 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us, hath past tense blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we have all the promises. And I believe what we don't, what I started looking at, I said, we've been talking about the promises. And, and I started realizing, do we really know what they are? We've already saw it's the, it's the life of the, the spirit life that's in every believer, a new creature in Christ. We, we also saw that it is that the inheritance deals with healing, deliverance, the blessing, um, it, you know, the, the new life in our, and our inheritance we have and the major thing the, the um, promise is heir to the world we have a right to speak heaven into this earth we have a right see to release the will of the father in this earth to manifest the kingdom of God in this earth that's all part of our inheritance the Holy Spirit is part of our inheritance is another you know aspect of our inheritance we can go to acts i'm gonna try to go to two scripture real quick i'm gonna go to acts real quick 233 and then i'm gonna go to second uh peter and we'll stop there amen amen now the second and this is all in in us we're connected to this through Jesus Christ. 
because of the blood of Jesus. The payment was paid. Amen. Now, so we look at 230. Um, do, 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 do. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? 22. 20, um, okay. Where are we here? Probably won't get to the other one, but. Okay, here it is. 20, 30, 33. Therefore, being exalted. Okay, 38. Peter said unto them, Repent the day of Pentecost when they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you. See, the promise of the Holy Spirit. It's a promise. That's why I believe that settles do God fill everybody with the Holy Spirit? Yes, because it's a promise. It's a promise. It's a promise. I'm looking around. It's a promise. He says, this promise is unto you and your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord your God shall call. Jesus said in the Acts 1-4, being assembled together, with them he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. And he and he uh, and said he, You have heard of me. So he was talking about the Holy Spirit. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be, promise of the Spirit, be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. So that's the promise. So we're looking at I have a list of all the promises that we have, that I've seen in this new covenant. And remember, all the promises of God is yes and amen. Well, that concludes our session tonight. Um, thank you for, amen, for being part of it, fellowshipping with this, with you. Um, don't forget, um, subscribe, like, and share. God gave the word. 6, 8, 11 songs. Great was the company of them that published it. And we want you to be part of that great company that aids us in getting, getting this word out. And until next time, we're just going to encourage you to read, uh, meditate, believe, speak the word of God. And as your faith um, to um, your faith being exercised because you are making God and his word the final authority. We'll see you next time.